Human Performance and Limitations Lesson 4. Don't go away yet. Did you know that if you see an airplane in the distance and it doesn't seem to be moving, you are most likely going to die? Please remember that the only airplane you are going to collide with is the one that seems like it isn't moving. By the time you will see the airplane moving, it will come in quick and you won't be able to avoid it. If you don't feel like learning anything else, I at least hope you will remember this. It's a small step in reducing 75% of accidents that we pilots are the primary cause of. Now let's jump back into the lesson. Today we're going to talk about vision, hearing imbalance, spatial disorientation and sensory illusions, health and hygiene, and human information processing. It's all going to be on a basic level today. We're going to make separate videos on each of these subjects going more in depth. The eye is the only organ that is nearly full size at birth. The eyeballs are protected by eyelids and are moved by surrounding muscles called extraocular muscles. When we are looking, our eyes move in rapid jerks that is called saccades. The stops between these jerks are fixations. It is not possible to move your eye smoothly unless a moving object is being tracked. So how do our eyes work? Light passes the transparent cornea and the lens. It then gets this plate inverted on the retina. Via the optic nerve it is being sent to the visual cortex in the brain, where we invert the image again so now we see it as it is in front of us. The cornea is 70% responsible for focusing. The other 30% is done by the lens. When we look at objects 6 meters, that's around 20 feet, the lens needs to become more rounded. This is called accommodation. The iris controls the amount of light passing by increasing in size when there is little light and turning small when there is a lot of light. Vision types. Photopic vision is day vision. They use around 7 million cones highly concentrated around the fovea, which is a slight depression in the retina. That's why during day vision we scan small sectors of 10 degrees for a few seconds before moving on to the next sector. At night we use cotopic vision. These work with our 100 million rods which are 10,000 times more sensitive to light. They are concentrated on the sides and form my peripheral vision. Complete light adaption takes about 30 to 45 minutes. It only takes one second of direct light to the eyes to lose this adjustment. Avoid exposure to bright lights and screens. Avoid smoking. Turn down cockpit lighting. Also, a vitamin A deficiency can also lead to bad night vision. When in an unpressured airplane at night flying above 5000 feet, you would also most likely want extra oxygen because the rods are very sensitive to hypoxia. Challenges in Aerial Visual Awareness Even though we are currently busy with EASA, the FAA has an interesting document, 90-48-C, and it basically estimates that it takes around 12 and a half seconds to see an aircraft, see the conflict, and make the correct response. Then the airliner itself would also need around 20 seconds to complete the maneuver. When using the technique taught, you need around 54 seconds to scan an area of 180 degrees horizontally and 30 degrees vertically. You can see the problem in this. Another issue is that airline pilots fly at higher altitudes where they might not have points to look at in the distance. So our eyes go to a rest position and focus about 1 or 2 meters away. That's 3 to 6 feet. This is called open field myopia and makes it hard to spot other airplanes in the distance. Try to find anything to look at in the distance, ground, clouds, your wingtips as a last resort. You will need to do this frequently to make sure your eyes don't go back to the resting position. Apart from the human body that can have issues, we also have to take in consideration our seating position. Are we in a place where we can do all of our tasks and have a good field of view? Even in the most perfect seating position, we will always have blind spots due to the window posts and other design factors. 
just as vision is vital for navigating through the skies, our sense of hearing and balance plays a critical role in maintaining control and awareness in the cockpit. But what really happens in our ears when we're soaring above the clouds? Our ear is divided into three parts, the outer layer, middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear captures sound waves and funnels them towards the middle ear, where they are amplified by three small bones known as the oscillus. This amplification is crucial as it allows pilots to hear important sounds despite the ambient noise of the aircraft. Deep within the inner ear lies the labyrinth, a complex system comprising the cochlea for hearing and the vestibular system for balance. The vestibular system includes the semicircular canals which are filled with fluid and lined with tiny hairs. These canals detect rotational movement of the head, while otolith organs sense linear acceleration. Spatial disorientation in pilots is often due to a reliance on faulty sensory perceptions. Without external visual cues, the body's vestibular system can send misleading information, causing the pilot to believe they are tilting, turning, or accelerating in a different way than they actually are. Instrument training is vital as it teaches pilots to trust cockpit instruments over their own senses, which can be deceived. Here are some common types of spatial disorientation and visual illusions pilots may encounter. The leans. A subtle, unnoticed turn can be corrected by a pilot without realizing it. When a correction is made and the aircraft returns to level flight, the pilot might mistakenly feel as if they are turning in the opposite direction. The graveyard spiral. During prolonged turns, pilots can become desensitized to the sensation of turning. If they then level off, they might feel as though they are turning in the opposite direction and wrongly re-enter the turn, leading to a tightening spiral that can be dangerous. The somatographic illusion. Rapid acceleration during takeoff can trick a pilot's senses into feeling as if they are tilting upward into a climb, potentially leading them to push the aircraft into a nose down attitude. The Coriolis illusion. This occurs when a pilot moves their head while the aircraft is turning. The motion stimulates the vestibular system in three dimensions creating a highly disorientating effect where the pilot feels as though they are pitching, jawing and rolling all at once. Inversion illusions. When an aircraft abruptly changes from climb to level flight, pilots might feel as though they are tumbling backwards. False horizon. In conditions of poor visibility, a pilot might confuse sloping clouds formations or even the ground itself for the true horizon and adjust the aircraft's attitude based on this false perception. Autokinesis In the dark, a stationary light can appear to move if stared at for several seconds, leading pilots to believe they are on a collision course with another aircraft. Preventing disorientation To combat these challenges, pilots must rely heavily on flight instruments especially in conditions of limited visibility. Regularly update their instrument skills with simulator training and real life. Stay aware of potential sensory illusions and check their perce perceptions against the reality displayed by their instruments. Stay hydrated and avoid excessive caffeine or alcohol before flights, as these can affect the fluid balance in the inner ear. Understanding and maintaining the health of your ears is not just about avoiding discomfort, it's about ensuring safety, precision and enjoyment in every flight. In the demanding world of aviation, pilots must adhere to strict health and hygiene practices to ensure safety and performance. This encompasses nutritional awareness, where you take care of a balanced diet 
rich in vitamins, low in processed sugars, to maintain energy levels during the flight. Hydration. Adequate water intake is critical, as the pressurized environment of an aircraft cabin can lead to dehydration. Sleep hygiene. Pilots should prioritize quality of sleep to combat fatigue, with strategies including dark, quiet sleeping environments and avoiding screen time before bed. Personal hygiene. Regular hand washing and use of sanitizers can prevent the spread of infections crucial for a pilot's consistent health. Fitness. Regular exercise contributes to the overall health reliance, making pilots better equipped to handle the physical and mental stress of flying. Mental health. Pilots are encouraged to seek support for mental well-being, as stress management is key to maintaining alertness and decision-making capabilities. Remember, a pilot's health is not just personal. It is a critical safety component for every flight. A short view into human information processing. Selective attention refers to the process by which a person focuses on one particular piece of information from the environment, all while ignoring other stimuli. In the cockpit, a pilot uses selective attention to concentrate on a specific instrument or communication channels that are most pertinent at any given moment, such as during takeoff or landing. Divided attention, also known as multitasking, is the ability to process two or more responses or react to two or more different demands simultaneously. Pilots are often required to divide, to divide their attention between multiple tasks, such as navigating, communicating and monitoring various systems within the aircraft. Channelized attention is when the attention is focused very narrowly on just one or two tasks or other stimuli, even when there are many others that need attention. It can be beneficial when performing tasks that require deep concentration, but can lead to missing unexpected events, which is known in aviation as tunnel vision. Dispersed attention is the opposite of channelized attention. It involves the broad allocation of attention across a wide range of stimuli or events. For pilots, dispersed attention allows for monitoring all relevant information in the cockpit environment, but it may also result in a lack of focus on the most critical tasks at hand. Hypovigilance is a state of a decreased alertness or attention. It can occur when a pilot is under-stimulated, such as during a long flight or an uneventful flight, and become complacent or inattentive to changes in the environment or instrument readings. This can be dangerous as it might lead to a delayed or inappropriate response to a situation. Each type of attention plays a critical role in a pilot's ability to safely operate an aircraft. Training and experience help pilots manage their attention to ensure they can respond appropriately to the demands of flying. This is especially true when confronted with complex or emergency situations. This was the end of lesson 4. Feel free to subscribe, we're gonna make videos on each of these subjects that go more in depth. And I hope to see you back in lesson 5. Thank you all very much.